Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon. This is going to be a Q&A video. Um, I wanted to put some questions out there, or actually <laughs> put some questions out there. Put the opportunity for you to ask questions um, so I can film a Q&A. I believe it's been quite some time since my last one. Um, I know I did a Q&A, geez, back when I was like living in my apartment. Um, but I don't think I've done one since. So I put the request out there on Instagram. I collected quite a few, so I think I have 11 total. I will be putting timestamps in um, the, the description box. So if you wanna go ahead and like search through the questions and just watch pieces of it, you can do that. Um, but let's begin. So number one, how do you keep people you work with? And this was actually um, two people asked this like a similar question. So um, this is to answer both of you guys. How do you keep people you work with or in regular or, or in regular life from finding you? So um, <laughs> I have an alter ego, okay? And this can go for anybody who has any kind of online business or online personality or anything that you just don't want other people to know about. Um, have an alter ego. So by that, that means um, I go by a different name. So Rose is a very significant name in um, for me. It's very personal. It's very intimate, but it's not my birth name. So that's the first tip is go by a different name. Go by a different email altogether. Don't use any of your personal contacts. Um, no personal email. So you got to have a separate email. You know, your website, everything has to be separate from your real life. Um, even your social media accounts, which I know that that can be a little bit annoying, um, but get into the habit of logging in and out of social media accounts. So if you have a personal one and then you have like your witchy one, <laughs> get into the habit of logging out of it. And I know it's annoying, but like I said, that is the best way to keep things separate. Um, so separate um, social media accounts, email accounts, and going by an alter ego, like a, a, an alternative name, okay? Don't use your, your birth name. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Sorry, I've been munching on a banana because I'm hungry. <laughs> um, the other tip I have is if you have to block all of your friends or family members or um, co-workers, people you really don't want to stumble upon you. So block their accounts. So if you know that they're on social media, block them on your other alter ego um, personality website or social media account. Um, and then the other tip is um, just making sure like, you know how sometimes you can sync your social media with your contact list? don't do that. So don't sync your contacts because there are certain ones, like I know Snapchat was doing it, um, where if you synced it, the, the people in your contact list would be notified if you created an account or whatever. It was weird. Um, and, and so get rid of that. Um, don't allow those things. So just make sure you check your personal settings, your privacy settings, um, but probably the best way is to block the certain people that it is that you don't want to have find you and go by an alter ego, different email, that kind of thing. Um, number two, your top five YouTube YouTubers that you, la, 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 I can't talk, <laughs> I can't talk today. Number two, your top five YouTubers you love to watch. So um, I wanted to put some tarot people out there, but I'm gonna go ahead and refrain from that because um, there are so many amazing accounts that I like to watch. Like YouTube is not just for tarot people. Like I, I watch a lot of tarot YouTubers, but I also like to watch other stuff. So um, number one is Gentle Whispering. She does beautiful ASMR videos. So if you guys, um, maybe if you don't know that about me, I love to watch ASMR. It's very relaxing for me. It helps me fall asleep. It's also a second form of meditation for myself. 
So gentle whispering, and also I will link everybody's um, YouTube account in my description box just so you guys can go check them out. Um, the other ASMR person I love, I love to watch is Loon Innate. She is amazing. Her She does a lot of like Reiki ASMR videos. They're really relaxing. I'm always falling asleep to her voice. So her as well. Um, curves, curls, and clothes. So this girl is a plus size, like, um, positive plus size body positive, you know, that kind of a, a person, but not just that. She also shows off her plus size outfits and how she styles for her plus size body. Um, and she does a lot of like, um, look books. So a lot of like videos about just certain outfits that she puts together or clothing hauls. So I love to watch that kind of stuff. The other one is Sarah Ann. She's also an, um, another um, plus size YouTuber that I love to watch. She's She likes to discuss things about like apple shaped bodies and that's, that's me, I have an apple shaped body as well. Um, <clears throat> so I really relate to her videos. She does a lot of vlogs at times. Um, she does a lot of like clothing hauls and that kind of thing and I really I really just like her personality. So she's another one I watch. And number five, Victor Otto. He is so cute. Like, <laughs> I always tell my husband he's my YouTube boyfriend. Like, I love watching him. I think he's just so, um, so positive and just his messages are really, really cool. He's all about like new age, awakening, that kind of stuff. Um, and so I like to watch his videos because he's just really inspiring and just, um, just has really good male energy that I really like. A lot of the YouTubers I watch are women. Um, so it's nice to have like a male YouTuber to, to, you know, indulge in. And I just think it's cool when you see a male YouTuber into like the metaphysical. It's, you see a lot of women that are into it, but the men, the men that get into it, it's pretty cool. Um, okay. Number three, which forgotten treasure did you find in storage so <laughs> those of you guys who are just tuning in and who maybe not have been keeping up with me I recently moved into my very first house so a lot of my stuff has been in boxes for two years as I was in like this transition with like living back at home and not being able to unbox everything so the biggest treasure that I found is this book of shadows I had bought this like maybe three or four years ago when I was really heavily into the like witchcraft and like learning all of that stuff. And um, this is a book of shadows that this really talented, amazing person, which I would have to, I have to go back to my Etsy shop to see um, the name of her shop. Cause unfortunately I don't remember. Um, but if I find it, I will definitely link it in my, um, in my description box. But she pretty much drew all of this gorgeousness onto this hardcover book. And I was using it as a journal. Um, book of Shadows is like, you know, a place where you could put your spells and whatnot. But I used it for a journal. So I forgot all about having this. And obviously, <laughs> this had to stay boxed up because if my family saw this, they would freak out. So um, it, I just thought it was so, it's so beautiful, her artwork, and just, it was gorgeous. So um, when I took that out of the box, I was just like, oh, I forgot all about it. <laughs> so that was like one of the first things that I put on, on my shelf um, to be out on display because it was hiding for like two years. Number four, do you find a spread more reliable than others? Um, or what is one that you always go back to? So a spread is in tarot spreads. Um, when I read tarot, especially, especially for my clients, I don't necessarily use spreads, but I do like to use spreads when I'm reading for myself. And that's because I find it difficult sometimes to read for myself. Um, as funny as that sounds, right? Um, but the spread that is mostly my go-to is like, it's one that I made up on my own. It's really similar to the, um, the Celtic cross, but it's like my own personal flavor of it. So like basically go-to spreads for me are like finding out the, the, the current energy of the situation or the person challenges or blocks. Um, and then like ways that you could solve the issue or, um, past influences, future 
predictions, like that kind of stuff, you know? Um, that's pretty much like a go-to a go to spread that um, I usually like to do for clients, but also for myself. Um, so that's probably the one that I that I find the most reliable is like, it's just my own version of the Celtic cross. Okay, number five, what is your favorite spread and why? So this was like similar to the last question. So um, like I said, the Celtic cross would be one of my favorite spreads. Um, the three, just a three card spread, the past, present, and future. That's always a really easy one to go to. Um, Ethany does a lot of really cool spreads for the full moons and the new moons. So sometimes I like to use some of her stuff. Um, but like I said, for the most part, if it's not something that I just come up with on my own, I just literally pull cards random. There's really no rhyme or reason of how I do it. I just pull cards. Number six, how do you know that you're ready to read for others? <laughs> So how do I know that I'm ready to read for others or anyone in general? Um, now, please take this as my own personal opinion. Do not take it as, you know, the truth. <laughs> this is just my opinion. Um, but you'll know when you're ready to read for other people when, number one, when you don't have to ask that question. So when you don't have to worry, when you're not worried about reading for other people or you're not worried about being wrong or you're not worried about, um, you know, conducting the reading altogether, that's when you know you're ready, when you don't have to ask questions about it because it just feels natural to you. Um, another thing is you'll know you're ready because you are just, you, you find that like you're reading for yourself, maybe you're reading for certain friends, and it's just, you, you're ready to just take the next step for reading, a, to read for a stranger, okay? When you feel just, it's, it's just in you, like you'll just feel like, okay, I'm ready to embark on this next phase in my reading journey. Um, I'm also going to take this question as like, how do you know you're ready to charge for readings? Because I think that that kind of goes hand in hand because we could read for other people for free and it's like not as stressful, but the minute you use money and exchange of money into that factor, that can be really stressful and can really make you nervous. I know that it, it did for me. So when you, how do you know when you're ready to charge your readings to read for others? when you know you would pay for your own work. So you'll know as you are doing your readings for people, especially if you're doing freebies and stuff, if you know that what you do is worth five, 10, 20, $50, that's when you know you're ready to start charging. When you would pay for your own reading <laughs> is basically when you know you're ready. And then also please take into consideration what other people tell you so feedback if other people are telling you oh my gosh you should be doing this you shouldn't you should not be doing this for free or oh my gosh like let me tip you because that was so amazing and if you're constantly getting positive feedback from people and they're telling you you're spot on or they're telling you like your prediction came through true or whatever the case that's also a sign too is like you're you're really good you know Number seven, do you ever do a reading for your cat? What kind of questions do you ask if you do? So yes, I have read for Luna. Um, she broke her hip October last year. And um, when she broke her hip, I pulled cards for her. I did like a whole little crystal healing on her. Um, and I pulled cards for her. My husband actually asked me, he's like, pull some cards for her and see what's going on. So when I read for cats, um, and this is also a true story. Um, when I read in a tarot shop, I actually did a couple pet readings. So I, and then I also offered it on my website, which I should actually start doing that again. <laughs> but, um, I did pet readings. So the people, sometimes they would bring their pet in or it would just be like over the phone or, or word of mouth. Um, but I pull for the energies of the animal. So basically how I would do a chakra reading for people, you know, I pull cards for every chakra. I would do the same thing for the animal. Um, it's also just an energetic reading just to see energetically where is this animal at? What is going on? Is there anything popping up that they're fearful of or, you know, fearing? And, and then also just energetically tuning myself, my, my feelings 
with the animal. So with Luna, um, when her hip was hurting her, you know, I was trying to kind of like put myself, my mindset into Luna's mind, like what's going on with her and just trusting my intuition of like whatever came through was what was going on. Um, so the kind of questions I like to ask for that is just like, what is, how is my pet feeling right now? Or is there anything that I should look out for? Or is there anything that they need? Like pretty much asking questions with the cards to give your animal a voice. Number eight, what was your first time that you had a profound spiritual experience? So when I was writing the question down, I actually remembered, um, this was like, oh my gosh, this was probably like at the very beginning of my spiritual journey, my awakening, which was in 2012. Um, I had a dream of Mother Mary and she appeared in my dream twice, but the this one, this one specific dream, it was really like vivid, like colorful. I was in like literally standing in the ocean. There was just nothing but water around me. A lot of my dreams have to do with water. I'm very like water person. <laughs> and I was in this ocean, right? So I was standing in this ocean. There was like a lot of waves and it was just, it was really serene, but there was like a lot of waves and it was just blue. And Mama Mary was standing off to a distance, but I knew it was her because, you know, the, the, the colors of her, she had the gorgeous like gold light draped all around her, her aura. Um, and I don't remember what she said to me, but I just remember like knowing instantly that it was Mama Mary. And it was just such an amazing dream to have because, sorry if I keep looking this way, I have, <laughs> I have my window open. So when cars drive by, sometimes I think it's like someone walking by. So I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> so anyways, I just knew in the dream that Mama Mary was there, that it was her. And it was just like really cool. I remember thinking, cause I dream very lucidly. Like, like sometimes I can control my dream if that makes sense. Um, so I remember thinking in my dream, like telling myself, you dreamt of Mama Mary, don't forget this. If As weird as that sounds, I don't know if anyone else does that, but I do that. Like sometimes I could, sometimes I could tell myself to wake up from a dream, but then if I want to go back to it, I could go back to it. Does that make sense? <laughs> so that was probably one of the most profound spiritual experiences because it was actually a visitation from the divine. Um, a second one that came to mind also was also another dream that I had where I actually was dying in my dream. And, um, the, there was somebody who was waking me up. She breathed air of life into me and the way she looked with the dark features and whatnot, I took it two ways. I took it either as it was me in my future, like in another lifetime, giving life to myself or it was, I also think of it, it could have been my, my grandmother who um, I associate a lot of my, my spiritual work around. I've never met her, but I just feel so close to her. So I feel like she was in my dream telling me it's not time for you to go yet. So I think what happened was in that dream, I think I stopped breathing when I was sleeping. And because when I, I remember when I woke up in the dream, she was breathing into me, like breathing air into me. But when I actually woke up from my dream, it was like, <gasps> like I, you know, I was taking a deep breath. So I think I actually like stopped breathing when I was sleeping, as scary as that sounds. But it just, it wasn't time yet. <laughs> so that was another profound experience because it was like, it, it was just like a, a blend of like real life and dream life, you know? Um, number nine, certain days. Um, okay, is there a certain day that you're more in tune with or you feel more powerful so a certain day um i would have to say i used to say ugh, dusk like when you can't tell whether it's nighttime or daytime like when the sun is setting but it's still light out but it's also nighttime i love that time that my that's probably my favorite time of the day um i feel most alive in the evenings i feel most alive like most witchy in the evenings um, my readings are on point, that kind of thing. Um, so probably I would say like evening, dusk to nighttime. I'm definitely a night owl. Um, number 10, how long does a request come true after a candle manifestation? So, um, if you, if you did a candle manifestation spell or whatever, I guess this person wants to know how long does it take for it to come true? Now that's a tricky question. That's a tricky. Uh, that's a tricky answer because 
it's really, I can't say it'll come true in three days. You know what I mean? It's really based on, based on divine timing and the amount of work that you're putting towards what it is that you want, okay? If you make a manifestation for something, you're manifesting, like let's say like how I manifested the house. I was putting an intention, I wanna find a house, blah, 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 blah. But let's say I just left it at that, I didn't physically do anything about it, it's probably not gonna come true, right? So take that into your own, you know, what, you, what it was you manifested. Whatever it was that you manifested, whether it was, you know, to obtain something or to receive something or whatever, if you're not putting in energy into it, like work and, and, and time and effort and, and all of that, if you're not doing anything about it, chances are you're not going to see much action taking place. So it's, it's basically like that for anything. Yes, you can set an intention. Yes, you can do a spell. But if you're not physically doing anything about it, you can't expect things to just magically happen. You know what I mean? So to answer the question, there really is no time frame. It's based on when it's meant for you and, and all of that. So I guess it's like it's kind of hard to answer that question because there really is no... Um, there's no time frame. You really can't put a time frame for stuff like that. And then number 11, um, advice for people who want to do a tarot as a career. So, um, <clears throat> as you guys know, I read tarot. Um, it, it's like my part-time job. <laughs> I have a part-time job, like a part-time day job, and then I do this also on the side. So it's like part-time, part-time. Um, but there are tarot readers who do it full-time. So my advice is, first off, make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. It's not for money, okay? Because yes, you can make money off of doing readings. Are you gonna be super filthy rich? Mm, probably not, unless you're like just this huge, big, reader that everybody knows about in the world i mean chances are you're not going to make you know tons and tons of money maybe eventually you could but if you're going into the tarot biz for money that's already the wrong reason you got to do this because you love it you got to do this because you enjoy reading for others and helping others and giving others guidance um so it's like a healing journey for yourself but it's also it's just like really, it's just, it's nice. You're working for other people. You're helping people. Um, so just make sure that you have the right intentions for doing tarot um, is probably the first thing I would say. Second thing is make sure you, you know, you're ready for it. You know, make sure you're comfortable reading for other people and you're comfortable receiving payment you know, be responsible, understand that when you're receiving payment for, for a service, you still have to perform the service. Um, you know, you can get into all of like the nitty gritty, like having a website, you know, that's, that's also important. You want to have a place that you could direct people to when they're interested in a reading or that you could have all of your information on so people can, you know, know who you are and whatnot. Being on social media is another one, you know, that's that's how you're going to get yourself known is if you're on social media and people have a way of finding out who you are, and what you're all about. Not being afraid to put your face out there. There's so many readers that I know who are completely 100% transparent. Their face is out there. And then there's the other readers that I've seen who are like anonymous. They don't show their face. And to me, that's that's not, it's not being super authentic. To me, it's like, if you're afraid to show your face, you're not ready to do this as a career. Because how do you expect your clients to become comfortable with you and to pay you and to share their deepest, darkest secrets with you if you're not willing to show your face? So make sure that you are comfortable being social and being on social media and being comfortable with your face being out there on the internet. Um, you know, I, and I'll use myself as an example. I 
don't, not everybody in my life knows that I do this, but I still put myself out there. It says a lot, you know, if you really truly love something, you will do what you got to do to do it. Um, another thing is just to start small and be patient, you know, um, don't expect like large amounts of money and, and thousands of clients right off the bat. This stuff takes time. Um, so be patient with the process. Um, and also come up with your own brand, you know, like your own name and put your name out there everywhere. Come up with a logo if you want. Come up with your own services. Be authentic is basically probably the most important tip I could give you guys is people will love you and come to you for readings if you are authentic and if they know that you're original and you're not just trying to be like someone else. Um, there's readers out there that are popular popular I hate that word but popular you know don't try to be like those readers do your own thing and the people who appreciate you and love you and, and enjoy the kind of work that you that you do will come to you you know what I mean so don't worry about trying to be like everybody else do do your own thing um and then also just be positive about it you know don't be don't pressure yourself don't rush yourself take your time have patience and understand that um, sometimes stuff, stuff takes time to manifest, but it is possible. It is. <laughs> and then when that day comes, when you can quit your day job and do this full time, that would be amazing. You know, I haven't gotten to that point yet myself. I don't know if I ever will. I actually enjoy having a social life outside of, you know, this stuff. But if that does, if that day were to ever come, that would be cool. I would embrace it, you know. Um, but just know you can do a lot with any issue, any, anything that you have is, I guess is the way I'm going to close out this, this video. Um, I did my services for two years living in a one bedroom, like a single bedroom with my husband in a household of people who were very conservative, who don't know what I do. So I was able to still do it. You will make it happen if it's truly what you want, okay? I cannot um, I cannot emphasize that enough. <laughs> you will find a way. Um, but if you really wanna do this as a career, you know, just be ready, be open, be open-minded, um, and don't put pressure on yourself, and don't have super major expectations right off the bat because, like I said, if you're doing this for money, you're not gonna see the kind of money that you think you're gonna get, at least not right away, you know what I mean? It takes time. So everything takes time, but it will happen, it can happen, as long as you're putting willing to put the work in there and to do it yourself and, you know, see it happen, so. That said, you guys, this concludes the Q&A um, video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for submitting your questions. And I look forward to connecting with you guys later on. Um, if you have any other questions or any comments, please leave comments below. I do read them. Um, and I look forward to touching base with you again. Bye, my loves.